اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین نحمد و نسل علیہ رسول کریم و علیہ علیہ و صاحبہ اجمعین جی برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ لیٹس ڈسکس دس ٹائم دا ایشو آن ریزنگ چلڈرن فرام دی اسلامک پرسپیکٹو وی آل لو آ چلڈرن ان مینسلی They mean the world to us, and our entire world revolves around them. In fact, our lives are governed by their routine of school, homework, extracurricular, their mealtime, sleep time, etc. And as we watch these darlings of us grow, facilitating their every need for a positive and healthy growth, we wish them life's very best. We wish them every joy, every happiness, and every success. Children, no doubt, are one of the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. As Allah himself mentions in the Qur'an, Al-Malu wal-Banuna zinatul hayat dunya Wealth and children are adornments of this dunya. This is because children beautify our lives, making it enjoyable and worth living. So those of us who have been blessed with children should be deeply thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this great mercy and blessing which He has bestowed upon us. No doubt, children are a mercy and a blessing. But Islam also emphasizes on they being an amana, that is a trust from Allah. So bringing up children in the right manner, which involves acquainting them with their creator and instilling in them the reasoning to follow the prescribed path, is a great responsibility on the shoulder of the Muslim parent. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned once, Each one of you is responsible for his flock. So, just like a shepherd is responsible for his flock of sheep, so are parents for their children. It is stated in the Quran, Our Lord is the one who gave each thing its natural disposition, then gave it guidance. What does this mean? This means that every child is born possessing two innate qualities. One is innate. his or her own individual nature or character, and the other is the basic innate God-given nature which is common to every human being. Like every human being has emotions, feelings of love, hatred, jealousy, etc. And every human being knows that it is good to be kind, affectionate, loving, and wrong to lie, cheat, kill, etc. So every newborn child who comes into this dunya is in an absolutely pure state untainted by anything such as original sin, which is an absolutely alien concept in Islam. And like everything else, the original nature of this child submits to its Lord. Later, as the child grows up, it picks up the faith of the parents or the culture or upbringing that surrounds him. So if the parents are believers and they follow the right path, the child is bound to pick this up. If the parents follow a religion other than Islam, the child follows that unless he seeks guidance from Allah and Allah wishes to guide him and even if the parents are Muslims but they have a wrong set of ideals and value system the child is bound to adopt all these in this way it wouldn't be really wrong to say that children are a reflection of their parents because they not only inherit their genes but also imbibe the value system set for them by their parents in that way the parents become the primary role models for their children because it is them that the child looks up to and seeks to follow. So the first and most important thing is that the parents should be ideal examples for their child to follow. The Prophet ﷺ was once asked, O Messenger of Allah, what rights can parents demand from their children? To this the Prophet replied, They are your paradise and your hell. This simply means that children brought up in the deen with good moral and spiritual values will be a pathway for their parents to Jannah, while children who grow up and go astray due to lack of good upbringing will be a pathway for their parents to hellfire. A'uzu billah. How many of us would even want to sniff the fire of Jahannam, leave alone, enter it? And how many of us would ever want our children out there? Our children, who we protect and shelter throughout in this dunya, 
whom we would not let a thorn prick, are we ready to fling them into the blazing fire of hell? Can we, dear brothers and sisters, even dream of being responsible for them entering Jahannam? May Allah protect us, our offspring, our parents and the entire ummah from the blazing fire of Jahannam. This is something we have to reflect upon because this is the truth. No one can deny the day of judgment and on that day we will surely be accountable and will be questioned on how we handled our responsibility. So if we have set out with the wrong set of goals, it is better to set them right right now or else we are bound to end up in a mess in the hereafter. Especially concerning their children, most of today's parents rear their children wanting them to be contributing members of society that is to have a good education and a good job and eventually settle down to rear a family of their own. Now the good education and good job are usually those which lead to material wealth and comfort. Practically all parents want these things for their children today and while these goals are well in a way reasonable, we find better goals mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah for our children which will lead them as well as us to paradise. 